I finally decided to lay my hands on this, an Intel Arc A750. But how well will it perform with Intel's latest driver update? Let's find out. Okay, let's do it. The A750, let's benchmark it. But of course we need a test bench to put the GPU into. And as I, uh, my old platform was AM4 and getting old, I just uh, decided to build a new test bench on the AM5 platform. Here we go. We're going to use the Ryzen 70, uh, 7600X on a B650i mainboard with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, 5600 mega transfers per second. Okay, this is where we're going to put the GPU into and then benchmark it. But I highly recommend you to subscribe because more uh, videos are coming about the Intel Arc card. We're going to build an all Intel PC. And uh, also I'm going to test the card under Linux and we're going to put it up against the RX 6600 from AMD. But that's all in future videos, so subscribe, like, yeah, do all that stuff. And now let's put together the test bench. Okay, moment of truth. Everything's set up. Let's start it. Oh, it's hard to reach now. Oops. Ta-da! Something's happening. Everything's plugged in. Intel Arc is lit up on the top. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, I think you can. Fans are spinning. Let's see if we get an output. AM5 takes ages to boot up. Um, the light just went on and off. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, there's, there's the output. Hey, awesome. Oh, it's, it's rebooting. It was still training something. Okay. Wow, AM5 is slow with regard to CPU and memory training and when you change hardware. Holy moly. Oh, here we go. Nice. Windows installation was a smooth process and also the installation of the Intel Arc driver went well. Although the download size of 1 GB for just a driver is quite heavy. When starting the PC this confirmation window pops up every time, quite annoying. And then those two notifications pop in every single time. Please only show them once Intel. At least the Arc control center now works as an app or overlay and here you are. It confirms we have the latest driver installed and everything is working fine. And now it is finally benchmark time. Alright, let's start with 3D Mark Time Spy. This DirectX 12 synthetic benchmark shows what the Intel Arc GPUs are capable of in pure DirectX 12 titles. I don't think we need to watch the whole Time Spy demo here together. So let's skip to the scoreboard in a sec. The benchmark ran really well and super smooth, so it is no surprise that the result makes the A750 look really good. Of course, we have to ignore the CPU score of the 7600X and therefore also the total score, as we are only interested in benchmarking the GPU. With 12,925 points for the GPU performance, the result is outstanding for a 280 euro card. In comparison, an NVIDIA RTX 3060, also paired with an AMD 7600X, ends up around 8700 points in the graphics score. Nice! This truly shows what the Intel card should be capable of in a well-optimized title with no driver issues and driver bottlenecks. But what about the real-world performance in games? Let's find out next. The first title we put the A750 up against is Cyberpunk. Hard to run with tons of effects and pushing the limits of the GPU. 
first run was in the high preset and any kind of resolution scaling is turned off. By the way, all tests are performed at 1080p. This is just a 280 bucks card, after all. I also performed a second run at the ray tracing low preset, no upscaling. Are you excited for the results? Ok, let's see. At the high preset, the game runs super smooth and I was honestly impressed. Good job Intel. With an average of 66 FPS, I would have no issues to play this single player title at the high preset at 1080p all day long. Things change a bit when activating ray tracing. With a ray tracing low preset and disabled upscaling tech of any kind, we end up with an average of 48 FPS. I was curious, so I also ran a third test with a RT medium preset. Here we ended up at an average of 32 FPS. Perhaps if you lock your frame rate to 30 FPS, the RT presets are playable and fun and certainly look great, but I honestly prefer the higher and smoother frame rates of the high preset without ray tracing enabled. Next up is Watch Dogs Legion. This modern title runs really great on the Intel Arc GPU. It runs super smooth and also fine when enabling some light ray tracing reflections. Let's see the numbers. At the very high and the ultra preset, without any ray tracing enabled, the Intel A750 didn't break a sweat. With an average of 89 FPS at the very high preset and 68 at the ultra preset, these settings are no problem for the card. Even the 1% lows are at 58 FPS at the ultra preset. This is nice. But what happens when we enable ray tracing? All you can enable in this game are ray traced reflections at different quality levels. I went with a medium RT reflection setting. This combined with a very high preset still delivers an impressive 55 FPS average with a 1% lows at 46 FPS. At the ultra preset with RT reflections we dip down to 46 FPS average and just 39 FPS in the 1% lows. I guess very high with medium RT reflections is the limit of the card in this title, if you want smooth playable frame rates, that is. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I tested the A750 in this game via the built-in benchmark twice, both times at the highest preset, but once with the ray trace shadows enabled at the ultra quality. Of course I chose to run the benchmark under DirectX 12, and yeah, the Intel Arc A750 delivered. Here are the numbers. As you can see, the average FPS are well over 100 at the highest preset. So I enabled ray traced shadows at the ultra quality and we end up with a great 62 FPS average. This is a very good result in my opinion. Now for a title that uses the Vulkan API, Red Dead Redemption 2. This open world game can be quite demanding and you can tweak a hell lot of settings in the graphics options. So I basically left the slider for quality versus performance in the center and ran the built-in benchmark. The game features no ray tracing, so this is a pure rasterization benchmark. What are the results? Here we go. As you can see, the average FPS is around 80, while the max FPS hits up to 140 plus FPS. The min value is the pure min value, this is not the 1% lows. The benchmark did not display those, so this must have been a dip somewhere while loading stuff or whatever because the benchmark ran battery smooth and I didn't see that dip down. The result is really amazing and shows what Vulkan is capable of paired with the right GPU. Now for a fun title and a title that is not commonly used in benchmarks. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. The game features no ray tracing but is one of those modern titles that puts rasterization performance through its paces. I went directly with the ultra preset, only to discover that there is even a badass preset that is even more demanding. And the results? Let's take a look. Hell yeah, the Intel Arc A750 just owned this title. At 1080p the game had nothing to put up against the GPU. Even at the badass preset, we only lose 5 FPS on average compared to the ultra preset and end up with an amazing average of 87 FPS. Nice try, Tina. 
Okay, Intel A750. How much of a fight can you put up against some pure brute Viking power? You guessed it, right? Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. With the preceding results in mind, I went straight for the Ultra preset. No ray tracing options in this game, so this is the highest quality preset you can choose. And here are the results. For Assassin's Creed Valhalla highest possible preset, this result is insanely good. 52 FPS for the 1% lows means some dips that you probably will never notice and an average of 68 FPS. Assassin's Creed should run smoothly around the magic 60 FPS mark on the A750 all day long. Very impressive. Last but not least, the A750 against Far Cry 6. How much of a paradise is the GPU in this title? It is a modern title and it features some ray tracing options. Ok, let's take a look at the results. Now check this out. First off we have the Ultra preset with an Amazeports results of 95 FPS on average. Even the min value never went below 84 FPS. So I turned on the DirectX ray tracing features, in this case ray traced reflections and shadows. And guess what? The A750 ate this tropical title for breakfast. With an average of 76 FPS and a min FPS of 66, this title is no threat to our small but mighty A750. Ok, time for my final verdict. I'm super surprised by the performance of the A750. Especially in modern titles, this card is no slouch. It really performs well. With regard to older titles, as you might know, DirectX 9 titles, it might be not on par with its competition. But honestly, do you need 300 FPS in older titles? Or will you be fine with just the 100 something this card will put out in DirectX 9 titles? Honest question. And Intel keeps improving its drivers, so there's more to come and it will only get better over time. For me, it's a no-brainer with a price of 280 bucks euros uh, here in Europe and 250 dollars in the US. Just get this card and be happy. It's amazing and all modern titles and upcoming titles should run fine on this card. So, which other titles would you like to see me run on the A750? Type in the comments down below and I will try my very best to run those titles on this card for you. And subscribe, because I will also try out this card under Linux. Let's see how easy it is to install the drivers and get it up running. And benchmark it. Ok friends, that's it for today. Hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe. Alpha over and out.